How's it going everyone? Welcome to the Halloween special. I had to bring my sourdough starter back from the dead for this one. This is the first naturally leavened bread that I've made in the last 6 months. But no worries, I haven't got rusty at all. So what we have here is a 70% hydration sourdough loaf with a little bit of wholemeal flour added for extra flavor and goji berries. It has a nice open crumb with a soft texture and the charcoal is only there for color. It doesn't have any flavor at all. So if you want to spook your friends with some black bread for Halloween, I'll show you how easy it is to make it. So let's see what we need. Start with some strong white bread flour, wholemeal flour, sea salt, a bit of water and a nice and active sourdough starter. I feed this guy once a day, so a hydration of 80%. We'll need some food grade charcoal powder and some dried goji berries, both of which you can find in my Amazon shops, link down below. But because the goji berries are dry and hard, we need to soak them. So just cover them with water and leave them for around 24 hours. As for the equipment, we'll need a bowl, a proofing basket, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a razor blade for slashing our dough with. The skull and crossbone stencil is optional, but adds to the theme. You can find that too in my Amazon shop. Last but not least, for good results, use a cast iron skillet with a lid. Of course you can get away with baking your bread on a tray. So with all that out of the way, let's make the leaven. I'm going to pre-ferment 25% of the total flour at a hydration of 80%, same as my sourdough starter. I'm using room temperature ingredients. My kitchen is around 22 degrees Celsius at the moment, which is around 72 Fahrenheit. If your kitchen is quite warm or quite cold, you may need to adjust the water temperature. I know my starts are in and out. I feed it once a day, so every 24 hours. And to build my leaven and have it ready in 12 hours, all I had to do is double the amount of starter in relation of fresh flour and water. And I've found that having your leaven at the same hydration as your starter makes it behave the same way. So it gives you more control and makes things more predictable. Make sure to mix your ingredients until there's no more dry flour left. Now cover this up and leave it to ferment for 12 to 16 hours. You want it to almost triple in volume. And my one was almost ready in 12 hours. But it is quite forgiving, so you can leave it for longer. And that has puffed up beautifully. Now we can make some bread. And as ever, I'm going to use cold water because we're kneading by hand and this dough is going to warm up. So grab a large bowl, add the water, the salt, the wholemeal flour and the charcoal powder and then give it all a good mix. You want to dissolve the salt and evenly distribute all the ingredients throughout the water so there's no lumps. Next up, add the leaven. And by the way, if your leaven is fully fermented but you're not ready to make your bread yet, you can simply pop it in the fridge to slow down fermentation. And you can easily leave it in there for around 12 hours and then use it straight from the fridge. It will work just as well, but keep in mind you're going to have to adjust the water temperature to compensate for the coldness of the leaven. It's just a way of adding some flexibility of when to make your bread. So after the leaven comes the flour, then mix everything together and pop the dough out on the table. We can start kneading it. The whole process will take around 10 minutes because this is a relatively high hydration dough. At the moment it's not too sticky yet, so I'm using the regular kneading method by pressing it against the table. But if it does start sticking to your hands and to your table, simply scrape it together. Don't worry about the charcoal, it's not going to stain anything. In fact, you can use it to whiten your teeth, so your table or your hands are not going to go black. As you keep kneading it, the dough may get stickier and stickier. So you can switch kneading methods halfway through. You can use the stretch and fold kneading method. Pick the dough up by the side, then stretch it against the table and fold it forwards. And always pick it up by the side and turn it 90 degrees. This is a great kneading method for sticky dough. And after around 10 minutes, the dough should be ready. Always wet your hands with a little bit of water when handling sticky dough like this. This is looking nice and smooth and stretchy. And look at that shine. Let's pop it in a bowl and take its temperature. Around 24 to 25 degrees Celsius is just about right for this because we want a slow proof. And we're also going to cold ferment it later. So we don't want it to ferment too rapidly. Now cover it up and give it an hour. And now we'll give it a fold and we'll add the goji berries. You could also call this laminating the dough. Brush your table with some water. Because we want to stretch the dough out nice and big, flour wouldn't work for this. So simply wet your hand and add a thin layer of water all over the table. Now pop the dough out, smooth side down. And all you want to do now is stretch it out to a big rectangle, but do it nice and gradually. If a corner resists, move on to another corner. But it should be pretty easy to stretch because it's been resting for an hour. As you can see, I'm going around in a circle. If you feel your fingers starting to stick, simply wet them with some water. Now it's time to add the goji berries. I soaked these in the fridge for 24 hours. And I drained them and squeezed out the excess water. Right, here's how you fold it. 
grab one side and fold one third over the middle. Then grab the opposite side and fold that over. Now grab the top and fold down a third, and grab the bottom and fold that over. Now you can flip the dough smooth side up again, tighten it against the table, and that's the lamination done. Now we've got many layers in our dough, and the berries are distributed evenly throughout it. Now we can pop it back into the bowl, and always place your dough in the bowl with the smooth side pointing up. Quickly clean down the mess, cover it up, and leave it to proof for another hour. And after the second proof, we'll give it a second fold. And it's just like the first one. Brush your table with water, take the dough out, place it on the table with the smooth side down and stretch it out. But this time you don't have to stretch it very big. It is nice and strong already and it will resist. If you try and stretch it too much, you will tear it. The folding is exactly the same as before. Cross the two sides, then fold the top down, fold the bottom up. And from loose and stretchy dough, it's becoming nice and strong. This is how we build tension in the dough. It will help our bread keep its shape when it's baking. Now back in a bowl it goes, Cover it up and leave it for the third proof. It will give it one last fold, which we're going to perform exactly the same way as the two previous folds. But this time, stretch the dough out even less than before. Whenever you're folding any dough, every subsequent fold has to be performed more gently than the previous one. The more tension we build, the easier it is to tear the dough later on. And you don't want to tear that nice, smooth, gluten surface, because that would be a defect, so be nice and gentle. Now cover it up and leave the proof for one more hour. That's the fourth proof, it's been proofing for four hours. Now we can pre-shape the dough. This step is there to get the dough organized for the final shaping. It will give us another chance to build a little bit more tension. And from now on, we're using flour, not water. Now tip the dough out on your table, smooth side down, and then give it a light shaping. Fold the top down, turn the dough over, fold again, and now cross the two sides over in the middle. So this is a nice light shaping but it does bring some tension. And because of that tension, we need to let the dough rest. Now turn it smooth side up again, cover it, and leave it for 30 minutes to relax. This will get the dough ready for the final shaping. To do the final shape, dust the dough with flour, and I'm not using a lot of flour. It just looks like that because the dough is black. Now turn it over and start flattening it out. If your hands are sticking, rub them against the table. And press it out nice and evenly using the palms of your hands. We are trying to degas the dough. Because it's going in the fridge for up to 24 hours, it will puff up quite a lot whilst it's there. Right, grab the two top corners and cross them over in the middle. You want to create kind of like a triangle shape. And then grab the top and roll it backwards and tuck it forward. Now after every roll, you want to tuck. We're trying to build tension here, so roll it nice and tight. And you should end up with a nice strong loaf. See how it's standing up, it's not spreading out sideways. Now this should not stick to the bread basket, but just in case, I'm going to dust it with flour, rub it all over, and then we're going to shake off the excess. By a hydration of 70%, it should not be very sticky at all. So when I took my basket and dusted that with flour, it was unnecessary. I would suggest you don't put any flour in your basket. Simply do what I did with the loaf. Dust it generously, then pick it up and shake off the excess. The thin coat of flour will prevent it from sticking. Now place it in the basket, smooth side down. You can stitch up the seam at the bottom to really make it keep its shape. Finish with a light dusting of flour. Now cover this with cling film and we're going to refrigerate it. If you want to bake it on the same day, simply leave it out on the table for another two hours or so. Or do what I did and pop it in the fridge for up to 24. But regardless of what you do, one hour before baking, preheat your oven and your pan. 230 degrees Celsius, fan off. And that's 450 Fahrenheit for my American friends. Right, let's see what we got. I end up keeping this loaf in the fridge for around 18 hours and it has puffed up massively. I think I need a bigger bread basket. You want to pick off all those goji berries because they're only going to burn in the oven. Now take a piece of parchment paper and tip your dough out onto it because there's a couple of things we need to do before we place this in the pan. And that came out flawlessly. Like I said, I could have used a lot less flour. And now brush off any excess using a brush and then brush the loaf with water. This will give us a nice crispy crust and it'll make the stencil stick. I used some duct tape to make it bigger. This will prevent unwanted flour from landing on the loaf. Now dust it generously. Don't worry about adding too much. We'll brush off the excess later after baking. And if you're not into skulls and crossbones, we'll do little hearts. What stencil you use is up to you. So one last thing before baking, we need to score the loaf. There was a goji berry in my way, so I took it out. I'll simply slash it from end to end. Ideally, you'll cut this in one swoop, but if you need to correct it, do it. You want to go about 2 centimeters deep, which is about 0.8 of an inch. 
I would say it's better to go deeper than not deep enough. And with all that out of the way, now we can bake our loaf. Grab your pan out of the oven, should be nice and hot by now. Make sure you place your loaf nice and centered so it doesn't touch the sides of the pan. And you also don't touch the sides of the pan, because you will burn yourself. Now cover it up and bake it with the lid on for 20 minutes. The lid will keep all the steam inside, make our bread rise nicely. After 20 minutes, we need to remove the lid. This is always my favorite part. But it's not ready yet, let's pop it back in the oven for another 20 minutes. And there you go, isn't that beautiful? It's got a nice big belly on it. I can't say much about the color, because it's still black of course, but the crust is nice and crispy and it's fully baked. Now brush off the excess flour from the stencils, now we can leave this on the rack to cool down completely. And there you have it, a black charcoal sourdough loaf. And although it may look gloomy and dark, and maybe even a little bit scary with the skulls and crossbones, it's actually quite good for you in fact. Naturally leavened bread, activated charcoal, wholemeal flour, goji berries, you'll probably even live a little bit longer when eating this. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.